So welcome to the Vulcan target area. Um, this is where we have our petawatt laser pulse. It's the most powerful laser that we have here and one of the most powerful lasers in the world. Um, and this is where we do experiments with that laser and we generate extremely high temperature plasmas. So underneath our feet is where the laser actually comes in. Um, and it's traveling through um, this vacuum pipe here that can get up to a meter in diameter. And so the laser is trapped at this point. It's not flowing through the air. At this point, even the laser itself gets about half, about half a meter in diameter. And the pancake of light, so to speak, is even though it's so big, the energy density, the light is still strong enough that it can break down the air. So if it was traveling through normal air, you'd see sparks like lightning sparks, um, which would just be a waste of energy. You want to get your laser from point A to B. Um, so it has to travel in a vacuum. It then hits these two compression chambers, these big vessels in the two corners of the room. Inside there, we have meter diameter diffraction gratings. They're used to do the opposite to what a prism does with light in terms of light comes into a prism and it fans it out in all the different colors um, of a white light beam. Well, actually, we can do the opposite with the diffraction gratings that we have in the orientation in these vessels, where it takes the colors that are in our laser beam. And even though we normally think of lasers having one color, these lasers do have a tiny range of colors and they reflect back and forth off the diffraction gratings and that causes those colors to become overlapped in space and more closely overlapped in time. And so what that means is that we're shrinking the laser pulse, squeezing it together so that it's a really, really short flash. We want that flash of light to be the shortest possible because power is a measure of how fast you deliver energy. So the shorter the flash, the faster we're delivering the energy, the higher the power. That's the goal of this whole setup here. So once the laser pulse has bounced back and forth between these two corner chambers about four or five times, it then is reflected off a mirror that sends it into the target chamber here. The final process is for it to reflect off a parabolic mirror. Now this mirror is over a ton in weight. It's a meter in size and has a very shallow par parabolic curve. That takes the parallel beams of laser light, focuses it down to a point that's a 20th the width of a strand of hair, five millionths of a meter. And it's at that little central point, that little focus inside that target chamber that's, as I said, a tiny, tiny area, five millionths of a meter. That's where we create these really high temperature plasmas. It's a blob of material that's as hot as the center of the sun. And from that process, we spit out loads of high energy particles and x-rays. And that's the bit that I study as a plasma physicist. Thank you so much for taking the time to show us around your lab. If you would like uh, to hear more about being a laser physicist, there is a link in the description down below to an interview that we've just done. There is also links down there to um, work experience and summer placements that you could do at the Central Laser Facility.